Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we also have a slab of charge, but instead of it being a conductor, it's an insulator. So instead of having all the charge on the top surface and on the bottom surface of the slab, here we have the charge all distributed throughout the slab in such a way that we have a volume charge density in terms of charge per unit volume. We use the Greek letter rho to indicate that. Now we're trying to find the electric field at some distance above the center of the slab, H, but not quite outside the slab. So we're still inside the slab, a distance H above the middle of the slab. Why is the middle of the slab so important? Well, when you're at the middle of the slab, you have exactly the same am amount of charge above as you do below, and there'll be no electric field at all at the very middle of the slab. As you move away from the middle of the slab, you have more charge below you than above you, and there begins to be an electric field in the upward direction. By the time you get to the top of the slab, then you have the most electric field, you have the most charge below you, so more electric field emanating away from the surface of the slab. But notice you'll have electric field going down as well as up, so only the charge above the center of the slab is what has an effect on the electric field at that location. None of the charge below matter because there you have the electric field going downward. So if we make a small Gaussian surface like that, the bottom of the Gaussian surface is going to be even with the middle of the slab, so there's no electric field emanating that way, and the top of the, the, top of the Gaussian surface is even with the point of interest, distance h above the center of the slab, where we want to find the strength or the magnitude of the electric field. Now we're ready to use Gauss's law, and Gauss's law tells us that E times A is equal to charge inside divided by epsilon sub naught, or the magnitude of the electric field is equal to Q inside divided by the area, the surface area of the Gaussian field, or the Gaussian surface, I should say, divided by epsilon sub naught. So now we have to determine what Q inside is and what A sub G is, the surface area of the Gaussian surface that matters. Notice again, the Gaussian surface is a cylinder. It has a side, it has a bottom, it has a top. The side doesn't matter because the electric field will only emanate in an upward direction. No electric field lines, no electric flux going to the sides, so we can ignore the side. And there's no flux coming from the bottom of the, of the Gaussian surface, so we don't worry about the bottom. The surface area we're only interested in on the Gaussian surface is only the top of the Gaussian surface. And since that is in the shape of a circle and the radius is r, the area will be pi r squared. So this is equal to, in the bottom, we're going to get pi r sub g squared times epsilon sub naught. Now we still need the q inside. Now we're given the volume charge density, which means that q inside is going to be equal to the volume charge density times the volume of the Gaussian surface. In this case, it'll be all the charge contained within that cylindrical shape. And so the volume of cylinder is the area of the base times the height. So in this case, that will be the density, the, char the volume charge density, times the area, which is pi r sub g squared, times the height, h. And h is, of course, the distance above the middle of the slab. Notice that this will cancel out this, and so the electric field inside the slab is going to be equal to the volume charge density times the distance away from the center of the slab divided by epsilon sub naught. And so that will be the total charge, in, or not, not the total charge, but that will be the magnitude of the electric field inside the slab, some distance h above the center of the slab. And that's how that's done.